from day one of college to graduating from home, I'll show you my entire Bachelor of Science in Data Science degree journey. Specifically, I'll explain the background behind the specific college I was in and then go into my entire curriculum. So with some background, I went to the University of California, San Diego, which had a six college system. The college system at UCSD is unique in that students are not required to live in the same major or college that their major is in. In my case, I was in Ravel College, which is primarily for biology and chemistry majors, since the biology and chemistry lecture halls and research buildings are located there. In retrospect, it was great that I was in Ravel since I got to naturally meet other students outside of data science. Some of the people I met are still really good friends to this day. So the Haliciolu Data Science Institute and the data science program were created in 2017. So it's a relatively new major to UCSD. In fact, I was part of the first graduating class of data science majors at UCSD. Since it was a new major, I ended up taking computer science classes my first year because I was initially interested in studying computer science. Now, part of my curriculum included learning how to hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm to help push this video to others who are interested in data science. I'd really appreciate it. So thank you for doing that. And with that said, let's get into the video. So I'll go over my entire curriculum. So in my first year, fall quarter, I took four classes. Speaking of computer science, one course I took was Intro to Computer Science in Java. This course covered the basics of object-oriented programming, such as variables, conditionals, loops, and functions or methods. One of the programming assignments I did was to essentially work with a blue screen to put an image on the blue screen by matching the RGB values. Uh, for context, I took AP Computer Science my senior year of high school, so it helped me when I took the intro course. That said, I still learned a lot in the intro course and found it to be a great intro course since it assumes a student has no prior programming experience. Um, another course I took was Calculus and Analytic Geometry. This course covered vector calculus, double, double integration, and more. For context, I took AP Calculus BC to be able to take this course. For me, I found this course to be very difficult, actually, since this was my first math course in college. So I had to quickly adapt from high school math to college math. Um, in addition to taking uh, one of the classes was debating multiculturalism. This course focuses on the debate about multiculturalism in American society. I took this course for my DEI requirement, which was a general education or GE requirement for all UCSD students. I decided to take this course to not only satisfy the DEI requirement, but also to balance out my course schedule with technical and major focused courses with GE courses. So another GE course I took was Great Performances on Film. This course examines major accomplishments in screen acting from the work of actors in films, such as Harold and Maude and Rosemary's Baby, or in film genres. We would watch movies and have to take a quiz at the end of each lecture. Uh, we would also have to write a couple essays analyzing two movies. So in winter quarter, I took three classes. Um, I took Intro to Computer Science 2. Uh, this course builds on basic programming constructs introduced in the first course to introduce class design and use, interfaces, basic class hierarchies, recursion, and file I.O. It also taught development, testing, and debugging of more complex programs. Um, some of the projects I worked on in this course were to build a replica of 2048, draw various shapes su such as a Mickey Mouse head, and create your own screensavers. This course helped me further develop the basics of Java programming. Uh, I also took linear algebra. This course taught matrix algebra, eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and more. One application of linear algebra that we worked on was computing symbolic and graphical solutions using MATLAB. I honestly don't remember too much about this course since I haven't used linear algebra in any of my data science projects, but it's still good to know what matrices are and some basic matrix concepts. In addition to those two courses for my major, I took Humanities 1 as part of Ravel College's Humanities requirement. So for context, the Humanities requirement consists of a five course sequence that students have to take for a letter grade. For this course, I read texts from the Bible and from Greek ec epic history, drama, and philosophy in their cultural context. Although this is, this is a course for a GE requirement, this course took up a lot of time than I initially anticipated between reading the various books, writing the essays, going to office hours to help 
or to get help with my essays, and participating in lectures and discussions. So if you're looking to enroll in Ravel College specifically at UCSD, definitely keep this in mind since other colleges have simpler GE requirements. So in spring quarter, I went all in on my major courses and took four classes. Uh, I took Intro to Data Science. This course taught concepts of data and its role in science and ideas behind data mining, text mining, machine learning, and graph theory. In addition, it helps you think about how scientists and companies are leveraging these methods to uncover new insights into human cognition. For my final project for this course, I worked with a partner to analyze a video game data set and gather insights on the attributes of a popular game versus an unpopular game. We use Python for data analysis and Jupyter Notebooks as our IDE to plot global video game sales versus critic scores and a correlation heat map to see any correlation between these metrics. So this course gave me a great way to understand the fundamentals of data science and the impact behind data science, which drove me to learn more about data science. I also took data structures and object-oriented design. This course taught the use and implementation of data structures such as linked lists, stacks, binary trees, and hash tables. It also taught object-oriented design principles such as interfaces, polymorphism, recursion, and Java collections. I found this course to be the main course to weed out students since this course is very time and knowledge intensive. I personally spent many hours and days working on programming assignments to recreate these data structures from scratch. I spent practically every uh, few times per week in the labs asking tutors for help with the assignments. So I'd recommend having a solid group of friends in the course to help each other with assignments and understanding the data structures in detail since having a group helped me in this course. I also took the software tools and techniques lab. This course taught a hands-on exploration of software development tools and techniques. Uh, this course puts an emphasis on weekly hands-on lab experiences to develop techniques about software design. Uh, so I learned basic Linux and shell commands from this course. Uh, I took this course concurrently with the data structures course since students usually take them concurrently. So it's nice to have the same group of friends for these two courses. Um, I would say uh, this course is the easier of the two since it's only a two line unit lab course. So it's less time intensive than the data structures course. So I'd recommend prioritizing the data structures course over this one. So the last course I took this quarter was Intro to Discrete Mathematics. This course taught basic uh, discrete mathematical structures such as sets, relations, and number systems. In addition, it taught methods of reasoning and proofs such as logic via logic design, induction, and recursion. Although this course was in the CS department, I don't remember writing any code. Uh, it was more focused on understanding some of the math behind CS concepts. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of this course in particular since I prefer programming courses, but I still got some value from it in terms of learning sets and logic design. So over that summer, I decided to get ahead in my GE requirements and took two classes. I took humanities and ethics courses that counted for two of the five courses for my humanities requirement. For context, I was able to take up to two of the five humanities courses online at a community college. So after some research, I decided to take these courses with some friends at a community college called Foothill College. I took these courses online from home, which in retrospect was a precursor to my last quarter spent studying at home. By the way, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on bell notifications to get notified when my new videos get uploaded. Stay up to date with the latest videos on data science, machine learning, and college and career advice. So thank you for doing that. With that said, let's get back into the video. So in my fall quarter, my second year, I took three classes for my major. I took mathematics for algorithms and systems and analysis. This course taught enumerative combinatorics such as basic counting principles, in inclusion, exclusion, combinations, permutations, and generating functions. It builds off of the intro to discrete math course. So like that course, I struggled through it, but I had a great group of friends to help me understand the concepts from this course. I also took computer organization and systems programming. This course taught an introduction to the organization of modern computers and emphasized on systems programming in C and assembly languages in a Unix environment. I remember learning about the various types of registers and how to use ARM assembly and C. Other than that, I can't remember any of the concepts since they're not relevant to my work in data science. 
I took this course since it's part of the computer science major. So I wanted to continue pursuing computer science. I also took principles of data science. This course taught computational thinking and tools necessary to answer questions that arise from large scale data sets and emphasize an entire approach to data science, including program or introducing programming techniques in Python that cover data processing, modeling, and analysis. I learned how to use the data science package in Python, which in retrospect was a bad idea since I learned how to use pandas, which is the standard data science package that I use in the next data science course in the major curriculum. So in the winter quarter, I switched to taking only data science courses. So I took two classes for my major and one class as a tutor apprentice. I took data science in practice. Um, I learned a lot about data gathering, data wrangling, data cleaning, data privacy and anonymization, data visualization, distributions, OLS, linear models, clustering and dimensionality reduction. For my final project for this course, I worked with a group to determine key features that make a successful Kickstarter. So part of our analysis for this project included creating charts for various metrics, such as the percentage of successful metrics by each category and a heat map for correlation for successful projects. I definitely learned about the end-to-end -end data science process and applied that process to this project. I also took a tutor apprentice. Uh, I took this course since I was a tutor for the intro to data science course and all first time tutors are required to take this course. This course taught how or about the best practices of being a tutor, such as how to run tutor hours and help students with learning course concepts and programming assignments. I enjoyed this course since it gave me an opportunity to help other students who want to learn data science and improve my leadership and communication skills. Uh, so I also took programming and basic data structures for data science. Uh, this course was taught in Python and covered various topics such as recursion, high order functions, function composition, object oriented programming, and simple data structures such as arrays, list, and linked lists. I learned how to use the pandas package in Python, which has been the standard data science package that I still use today since it's great to use for tabular data such as a spreadsheet. The programming assignments for this course taught me how to recreate certain data structures such as linked lists in Python. So this course got me more comfortable working with Python, especially after using Java and C++ in the prior year. So in spring quarter, I took two classes for my major and one GE. Um, I took human impact on the environment. This course taught various issues such as global warming, species extinction, and human impact on the oceans and forests, and explain projections on environmental impact in relation to these events. I remember watching documentaries about the current environmental impact and projections for future impact during lectures and taking notes since students would be quizzed on the documentaries in the next lecture. As for the discussions, I remember having to read an additional book or article about the current topic from lecture and discussing the broader significance of the book or article and tying those takeaways back to the lecture topic. I took this course since at the time my major required students to take three courses in either biology, chemistry, or physics. Um, for context, I had one of the three courses already taken care of since I took AP Biology, AP Chemistry, and AP Physics one in high school. Um, I specifically chose biology since I found biology courses to be the easiest for me. Um, I also took data structures and algorithms for data science. Uh, this course taught advanced programming techniques such as encapsulation, abstract data types, interfaces, algorithms and complexity and data structures such as stacks, queues, priority queues, heaps, binary trees, binary search trees, and hash tables. Um, interestingly, at the time, this course was taught in Java which wasn't a huge deal for me since I was already comfortable in Java from taking AP Computer Science in high school and the Intro to Computer Science courses for my first year of college. Uh, according to the course staff, uh, this course was taught in Java because they wanted students to be familiar with other programming languages such as Java that can be used for data science. 
I knew hearing from friends and other students that this course was a huge transition for them since they didn't have any prior experience working in Java. So I would recommend learning Java before taking this course, whether that's through taking the Intro to Computer Science course or learning on your own through YouTube videos or other online resources. I also took Humanities 5. This course focused on modern culture and taught challenges to liberalism posed by various movements such as socialism, imperialism, and nationalism. It also taught the growth of new conceptions of individual psychology and new forms of self-expression. Similarly to when I took Humanities 1, this course took up a lot of time that I initially anticipated uh, between reading the various books, writing the essays, going to office hours to get help with my essays, and participating in lectures and discussions. <clears throat> Fortunately, my friends and I planned to take this course together since we figured this humanities course would be the easiest out of the five required courses since it taught the most recent content. By the way, be sure to comment below what data science or college and career topics you want me to go into more depth. Uh, with that said, let's get back into the video. So in fall quarter, my third year, I took three classes for my major. I took uh, human genetics in modern society. This course taught the fundamentals of human genetics and an intro to modern genetic technology, such as DNA fingerprinting and gene cloning. It also taught the applications of these techniques, such as genetic engineering, forensic genetics, and genetic screening, as well as the ethical implications and social impacts of these applications. Personally, this course wasn't too difficult for me since it's designed for non-biology students and other students who have no prior genetics knowledge. Also, I took AP Biology in high school, so I was already introduced to genetics concepts, which made this course fairly easy for me. <clears throat> I also took Interaction Design. This course taught the principles for designing, implementing, and evaluating user interfaces. It taught various topics such as user-centered design, rapid prototyping, experimentation, direct manipulation, visual design, and software tools such as JavaScript and Firebase. I worked with two other classmates on a quarter-long design project that applied the concepts we learned from the course. Our project was called greek to go which was a platform that would help students who are interested in joining a fraternity or sorority help determine the top three fraternities or sororities to join based on certain metrics, such as the importance of professional connections versus social interactions uh, that the student could rate on a scale of one to five based on their personal preferences. I took this course since it counted as one of my upper division electives, and I wanted to learn computer programming skills other than Python. I also took statistical methods. This course taught probability, discrete and continuous random variables, and the various types of distributions such as binomial, Poisson, and Gaussian distributions. It also taught the central limit theorem, confidence intervals, hypothesis tests, and curve fitting. Each homework assignment included a programming portion in which I had to apply stats concepts by writing R code, which is mainly used for stats. So in winter quarter, I took three classes for my major. I took brain-computer interfaces. This course taught pattern recognition algorithms, signal processing, and human-computer interaction issues in various brain-computer interfaces such as EE-based, EEG-based interfaces. I also worked with a group on a final project, which was to apply a multi-class extension of CSP to perform classification on multi-class motor imagery data. I took this course for one of my upper division electives. I also took practice of data science. This course taught the techniques of data science, such as algorithms, statistics, machine learning, visualization, and data systems. Uh, I learned how to use more Python data science packages, such as scikit-learn for machine learning and Seaborn for data visualization. This course was great because I learned how to use these Python packages 
which I use for future data science projects. So I also took exploratory data analysis and inference. This course taught how to process, analyze, and visualize data using the statistical language R. It also taught hypothesis testing, bootstrap methods, inference, sampling, regression, and diagnostics. I worked with a group on the final project, which was the Google Cloud and NCAA ML competition to determine specific features that most influence a team's performance throughout the season and use these top features to predict the March Madness bracket with some baseline accuracy. So in spring quarter, I took three classes for my major. I took the Human Computer Interaction Portfolio Design Studio. This course allowed students to create a personal portfolio of product design projects for web and mobile, work on oral presentations, and practice pitches to stakeholders. I worked with the same group from the previous course to work on our final project called Music Master, which was a music recommendation platform that would recommend similar songs based on beats per minute or BPM or song title to help music artists create a curated playlist for their next gig. Uh, I also took Intro to Artificial Intelligence. This course taught the principles behind topics in super, supervised learning, such as k-nearest neighbor classifiers, decision trees, boosting, and perceptrons. It also taught topics in unsupervised learning, such as k-means and hierarchical clustering. Since I was already introduced to some of these ML concepts from my data science courses, this course was relatively easy. <clears throat> I also took spatial data science and applications. This course taught spatial data analysis, including geographic information systems or GIS, spatial big data management, and geostatistics. I worked with a friend on the final project, which was to determine if there is a correlation between clean streets using the Los Angeles Clean Streets Index and other city features, such as median household income and crime locations. I learned how to use Python spatial data science packages, such as ArcGIS from Esri, GeoPandas, PySAL, and more. I really enjoyed this course since I learned a type of data science that was new to me and an interesting application of data science. Now, if you made it this far into the video, I really do appreciate it. Um, I would appreciate it even more if you could hit the like button and make it turn blue like the sky here. So thank you for doing that. And with that said, let's get back into the video. So in fall quarter of my fourth year, I took three classes for my major. I took the recommender systems and web mining. This course taught data mining and predictive analytics and emphasized on studying real world data sets, building working systems, and applying current ideas from machine learning research. I worked with a group for our final project, which was to build a model that predicts whether an app bat in baseball will have success or not. Uh, so I also took intro to data management. This course taught uh, storage and management of large scale data using classical relational systems, such as SQL, towards applications in data science. So it taught the SQL data model and query language, relational data modeling and schema design, elements of cost-based query optimizations, relational database architecture and database backed applications. Specifically, I learned how to draw ER diagrams to understand relations between entities. Um, I also took intro to data visualization. This course taught about creating effective vis visualizations using computer graphics, human computer interaction, cognitive psychology, design, and statistical graphics to synthesize relevant ideas. <clears throat> I designed visualizations using D3 and other web-based software to compare their effectiveness in conveying insights. I learned that data visualizations are just as important, if not more so, than data analysis and using ML algorithms, since you ultimately have to effectively convey your insights to your audience to ensure they understand the impact of your work. So in winter quarter, I took three classes for my major. I took 
artificial intelligence, probabilistic models. This course taught probabilistic methods for reasoning and decision making under uncertainty, inference and learning in Bayesian networks, and predicting and planning in Markov decision processes. It also tied these concepts to applications in intelligent systems, <clears throat> speech and natural language processing, information retrieval, and robotics. This course focused more on understanding the theory and concepts behind AI and ML rather than writing code. I also took Systems for Scalable Analytics. This course taught the principles of computing systems and infrastructure for scaling analytics to large data sets. Specifically, it taught memory hierarchy, distributed systems, model selection, heterogeneous data sets, and deployment at scale. In addition, it discussed the design of systems such as MapReduce, Hadoop, and Spark in conjunction with their implementation. Students will also learn how to, uh, data flow operations can be used to perform data preparation, cleaning, and fe feature engineering. I also learned how to use Dask and AWS to work with large data sets. Um, I also took Data Science Project 1, which is part one of the two-part senior capstone sequence. In this two-course sequence, I investigated a topic, which was genetics, and designed a system to produce statistically informed output. The investigation spanned the entire life cycle, including assessing the problem, learning domain knowledge, collecting and cleaning data, creating a model, addressing ethical issues, designing the system, analyzing the output, and presenting the results. This course in particular dealt with research, methodology, and system design. At the end of this course, I produced a research summary, summary and a project proposal that I would work on in the second part. So in uh, spring quarter, my entire university moved to virtual learning due to the illness. To finish my degree, I took two classes for my major and one final GE. Uh, I took data science project two, which is part two of the senior capstone sequence. In this course in particular, I implemented the project while studying the best practices for evaluation. I worked with a group on our final project, which was to predict disease risk for three diseases, which are coronary artery disease, Alzheimer's, and diabetes using machine learning. We compared how various machine learning models performed in predicting disease risk across low, medium, and high risk for each disease. This course was the culmination of all the data science concepts I learned from the previous courses. Uh, I really enjoyed this course since I got to apply data science and machine learning to the healthcare and genetics industries and work on a group project that I can include in my portfolio to show to prospective employers to showcase my data science skills. Um, I also took software engineering IoT applications. I learned how to use an ESP32 device as a temperature sensor, how to write C code in Arduino to work with the ESP32 device, and how to use MySQL to store the temperature and time data. For the final project, I created a web app by using those previous skills, plus HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and Python to track temperature data across the world since students went back home due to the illness. From my data analysis, I determined that Sacramento has about 7% greater accuracy for weather forecasts than San Diego. Finally, I took Humanities 2 to complete my Humanities GE requirement. This course incorporated texts from Latin authors, early Christian literature, the Germanic tradition, and the Middle Ages. I ended up taking it this quarter since it's only available during spring quarter. Since I was learning virtually at this point, this course was relatively easier compared to the previous Humanities courses because course staff was more lenient on grading due to the, due to the circumstances at the time. Um, so I hope you found a lot of value from this walkthrough of my entire data science degree. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit the bell to get notified when my videos get uploaded. 
Also, comment down below what you learned from this video and what other topics you want to see. And share this video with anyone interested in learning about data science. With that said, thanks for watching. Take care.